Once upon a time, there was a famous route called the Panama Canal. It was like a superhighway for ships, helping them zip between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans quickly. But then, Mexico had an idea. They wanted to build something similar, right at their doorstep. Join us on a voyage through time and tide as we chart Mexico's maritime destiny. From ancient seafaring traditions to modern shipping hubs, discover how this $4.5 billion project is poised to shape Mexico's role on the global maritime stage. Welcome, and let's get started. Before we talk about Mexico's latest project, let's take a look at the Panama Canal. At a particular time, nestled within the lush landscapes of Central America, there lay a dream. A dream of connecting the vast oceans that kissed either side of the continent. This dream, spanning centuries, echoed in the hearts of explorers and traders alike. A yearning for a shortcut, a passage to ease the journey between the Atlantic and the Pacific. Our tale begins in the 19th century, when French engineer Ferdinand de Lesseps, renowned for his triumph in constructing the Suez Canal, dared to turn this dream into reality. With grand ambitions and unwavering determination, he led the charge in initiating the construction of a canal through the Isthmus of Panama. Yet despite his vision and prowess, the project faltered under the weight of disease, terrain, and financial woes, leaving behind a trail of shattered dreams and broken promises. Undeterred by the French failure, a new champion emerged, a nation driven by ambition, innovation, and the spirit of progress. The United States, under the leadership of President Theodore Roosevelt, seized the mantle, recognizing the strategic importance of a transoceanic canal in an era of burgeoning global trade and geopolitical maneuvering. And so, the stage was set for one of the most ambitious engineering feats in history. With the might of American industry and ingenuity at their disposal, legions of workers descended upon the Panama Isthmus, ready to conquer nature's formidable obstacles. They battled sweltering jungles teeming with deadly diseases, grappled with treacherous terrain, and faced the daunting challenge of bridging the gaping chasm between two oceans. But where others had faltered, they persevered. Through sheer determination, grit, and a relentless pursuit of innovation, they forged ahead, carving a path through the heart of the continent. They constructed locks to overcome the dramatic difference in elevation between the oceans, they reshaped landscapes, and they laid the groundwork for a modern marvel that would forever alter the course of history. Finally, in 1914, the world bore witness to the realization of a dream, a passage that united the Atlantic and Pacific, a gateway that ushered in a new era of global connectivity. The Panama Canal, a triumph of human endeavor, stood as a beacon of progress, a symbol of mankind's indomitable spirit in the face of adversity. Since its completion, the canal has served as a vital artery of international trade, facilitating the seamless movement of goods and vessels between the world's major markets. It has reshaped global commerce, shortened shipping routes, and catalyzed economic growth and development across continents. But even something as amazing as the Panama Canal needed a little help to keep up with the times. That's where the Panama Canal expansion program came in. In 2007, the people who looked after the canal decided it was time to make it even bigger and better. They wanted to double the canal's capacity so they could help even more ships sail through its waters. But they didn't just want to make it bigger, they wanted to make it better too. They cared about the environment, so they made sure to study how the expansion might affect the plants and animals that call the area home. As part of the expansion, they dug a new channel and made the entrances wider and deeper. They raised the level of a big lake called Gaten Lake and dug deeper in a place called the Culebra Cut. But the most exciting part was the new locks they built. These locks were like giant water elevators that could lift ships to the level of Gaten Lake and then lower them back down again on the other side. They had big rolling gates to keep the water in and save as much as possible. With the expansion finished, the Panama Canal was bigger and better than ever. Ships of all shapes and sizes could sail through its waters, carrying goods and dreams to every corner of the globe. Now back to Mexico. There's a place called the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. It's like a narrow strip of land that's perfect for a shortcut between the oceans. So the Mexican government decided to build a special railway there, kind of like a super fast train track for cargo. People got excited because this new project could bring a lot of money and jobs to the area. But at the same time, some folks worried about what it might do to the environment and the people living there. Experts talked about how this new railway could change the way things are done in the world of trade. They said Mexico could become a big player on the global stage. 
but others warned that big projects like this can have big consequences. They were concerned about how it might affect the land, the animals, and the people who call the area home. In the year 2020, under the watchful eye of President Andres Manuel Lopes Obrador, this dream stirred, plans were laid, blueprints drawn, and workers took to the land, their hands shaping the future. It was the birth of the Esmuts of Tehuantepec Interoceanic Corridor, CIIT, a grand railway stretching from the Pacific port of Salina Cruz to the eastern shores of Coatzacoalcos. The government spoke of economic bounty, promising a new lifeline for the impoverished regions it traversed. Jobs sprouted like wildflowers in the wake of progress, offering hope to those who had long yearned for a brighter future. Experts talked about how this new railway could change the way things are done in the world of trade. They said Mexico could become a big player on the global stage. So this corridor project in Mexico is supposed to be a faster and cheaper way to move stuff between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Eduardo Romero Fong, who is in charge of planning this, thinks it could be a big deal. He says it could handle over a million containers each year, and by 2050, it might bring in a lot of money and jobs. The government also thinks this corridor could boost Mexico's economy by a lot. They say it'll make it easier to trade with the United States and other countries. Plus, it might open up new opportunities to do business with places like China. Now, not everyone sees the corridor as competition to the Panama Canal. Some folks think it could work together with it. The Panama Canal people say they've got lots of experience and can help out with this new project. And guess what? It seems like all these big plans might already be starting to pay off. Some reports say that because of projects like the corridor, the south and southeast parts of Mexico are starting to grow more than they have in a long time. That's good news for a region that's been struggling for years. As part of the corridor project, the government plans to build 10 industrial parks in the Isthmus area. These parks aim to attract private investment and create more job opportunities. They're calling these areas development poles for welfare, or PODEBIS for short. Each of these parks will be quite large, about 300 hectares, which is like having almost 740 acres of land. The government wants to encourage businesses to invest in these parks, so they're offering them some special benefits. For example, companies that set up factories in the corridor won't have to pay income tax for the first three years. After that, they can get a big reduction in their income tax for the next three years if they create jobs like they promised. Also, for four years after June 6, 2023, businesses won't have to pay a value-added tax. This means they can save a lot of money, which might make them more likely to invest in the area. Plus, the government promises that these businesses will have access to essential services like water, electricity, and natural gas. Lots of businesses, both from Mexico and other countries, are interested in these industrial parks. Car makers are thinking about setting up factories there, but they're hoping for better roads and stuff. Also, companies from Taiwan that make computer chips and electronic gadgets are looking into investing in these parks. In June 2023, Mexican and foreign businesses had already proposed 52 projects for building plants in the area, which is a big investment of about 4.5 billion US dollars. By late July, the government estimated that the first five development poles would attract a total of 7 billion US dollars in private investment. On May 11, 2023, the government shared details about six of the 10 development poles, and the next day, they officially declared them open for business. Later, on October 11, three more poles were declared, and finally, on October 16, the last one was announced. Thanks for tuning in to learn more about Mexico's $4.5B in Panama Canal rival, the Interoceanic Corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a like and share it with your friends who might be interested in global infrastructure projects. What are your thoughts on this ambitious endeavor? Let us know in the comments below. We love hearing from you. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our future videos. And don't forget to check out our other videos for more fascinating insights into the world of economics, geopolitics, and innovation.